In this rapidly advancing realm of generative AI, prompt engineering has become a pivotal focus, particularly with enterprises that are adopting chatbots and various LLM applications. Today's discussion goes deeper into practical techniques that allow non-experts to benefit from Gen AI. What are the critical factors for optimizing business processes through prompt engineering? What strategies companies can adopt for seamless transitioning between different LMs? And what does the future look like for prompt engineering? This conversation aims to provide an understanding of prompt engineering's current state and future trajectory. We are going to offer valuable insights for enterprises looking to maximize their Gen AI investments. So let's go and meet today's guest once again, Aaron Vermeersh, Principal Architect at Carrick. Aaron, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be back. And today's discussion is more or less like a kind of follow-up on the previous discussions. And if you look at the way uh, most enterprises are consuming Gen AI is uh, by kind of developing chatbots such as talk to your documentation or talk to your databases, you know, we talked about that last time. But when we look at some of these cases, it seems that the interactions are open-ended, which require users to be kind of familiar with various prompting techniques to achieve the best result. Can you talk about if there are other applications of these technologies that allow users to while benefit from Gen AI, but it doesn't require some kind of expertise in prompt engineering. I mean, I should not know what kind of questions to ask to get the answer that I need. Absolutely. So you're right. I think a lot of enterprises are approaching Gen AI from the perspective of there's this large language model. It can talk to me. I can talk back to it. So let me use that as the focal point going forward. So um, let me chat to my documents. Let me chat to my code base. Let me chat with my database. But all of these require a enterprise to go and upskill their workforce to handle their new business workflows involving a chatbot. But if we go and look at how machine learning has en entered the marketplace, it's typically done very quietly. Most users don't actually know that they're interacting with a machine learning model. For example, let's go ahead and look at Netflix. You log into Netflix and you're given a number of um, movie type recommendations, horror, action, European romance films, etc. All of those movie clusters are defined by a machine learning model on the back end. The ordering of the movies within that cluster is specific to you. It's done by a ranking model. The movie posters that appear uh, for each of the movies, those are selected by AI. So your movie posters and my movie posters, even for the same movie, are different, as well as what the actual trailer that you're seeing for that movie is. All of those are different machine learning models. So I think when we start to approach these Gen AI use cases, how can we incorporate uh, Gen AI and large language models subtly into people's workflows? One of the ways that we can go about doing this is, for example, the business process optimizations. So if you're an enterprise and you have a army of people having to do stare and compare on documents or video or voice, they typically work with some UI where maybe the PDF shows up on one side of the UI and a list of questions that they have to answer or fill in the blanks for appear on the other side. They've been trained in this UI. They know how to do their jobs. AI can come in, a large language model can pause the videos or the images or the voice recordings and answer a set of questions specific to that business process. And then you can float those up for um, your enterprise users. In this way, their day-to-day -day hasn't changed. They use the same product, they go through their same workflow, but their answers have been done for them. And as you go through this and you find that some of the answers are 99% accurate, well, why have a human involved in the loop anymore? Uh, let's just have the, the machine learning model go ahead and do it. So I think right now enterprises are kind of all following each other and saying hey we're going to just have chat with our documents or chat with our database but there's a massive amount of untapped roi still available for gen ai and large app 
language models by finding scenarios where it can be integrated into an established um, workflow, accelerate the productivity of a particular user, not by retraining them, but instead by providing them the answers they were already looking for. If you look at some of these businesses and if you look at the business process optimizations that you know we have talked about, what are the factors that should be considered in prompt engineering to devise the best solution for a specific problem? Sure. So let's go and continue on this idea of business process optimizations with large language models. Um, typically, what ends up happening is you've removed the prompting from the user and you've put it onto a machine learning scientist. That machine learning scientist is going to have to approach approach the prompt engineering through two methodologies. The first one is the incorporation of subject matter expertise. This is a pure consulting uh, part of the problem where the machine learning scientist will want to sync with someone from the business and find out what type of vocabulary are you using, um, what's that knowledge base that the subject matter expert has that the ML scientist doesn't have that can be incorporated into those prompts in order to drive the business KPIs that you care about. Probably it's just going to be some variation of accuracy. Doesn't need to be. Um, but I don't have all of the context about you know, financial services or um, uh, vehicle underwriting or mortgages or any of these other subject domains. But the business does. So I can sync with them and take their knowledge and put it into the prompts. There's also another benefit to the business by doing this because typically I'm syncing with someone with 25 years of experience uh, that know all of the rules and maybe some of these rules aren't written down. By working through this process, we're actually able to create a corpus of information that might not exist for the um, enterprise that can now exist and will live within your code base for forever. The other part of prompt engineering is more of what people are used to. You can go read blogs about it, where how we actually write the prompt can determine the performance that you're going to end up getting. It could be as simple as, I have a question, what is the date on this document? I could have a variation of it as the date of the document is blank. These two prompts can have very different accuracies and finding the um, correct prompt is in some ways still a, a guess and check. But um, to give you an example, we have one question. It's very simple. It could be as simple as, you know, what is the date on the document? But there's a typo in it and it's a typo that actually exists in production. There's an extra space. Now, when I found uh, that typo, I'm a perfectionist here, so let me go out and remove that typo from production. But when I went and did my baseline testing on that particular question and removed that extra space, my accuracy dropped by 5%. So there's going to be, and there still is, a large amount of guessing and checking and figuring out how does this particular large language model want this particular question phrased in order to uh, get the highest accuracies. And now when we are talking about LLMs, of course, there are so many LLMs available. Of course, they are open source and there are proprietary uh, ones. And then uh, new models, they keep emerging on a regular basis. So if you look at the amount of investment that is required to fine tune prompts for optimal you know, performance, as you just gave some examples. Can you talk about what kind of techniques can expedite the transition between different models? Uh, it doesn't really matter whether we're jumping from one model, from one provider to other, but also as new models are emerging. I think, as you saw in the previous scenario, there is still a large amount of effort that has to go in and trying to find the optimal prompt. What I would like to start to advocate for is a kind of automated prompt engineering. How much of this work can be done by AI or by software? Can we take what is a very human-centered activity and turn it into a compute-heavy activity? Traditionally, in machine learning, like in training neural networks, this kind of error correction is done during backpropagation. Can we start to try to figure out what backpropagation might look like for prompt engineering? Some of the methods can be just pure brute force. Uh, so let me take the best question that I have, 
already incorporate all of the subject matter expertise from the business, give it to my large language model and say, hey, can you generate a hundred variations, a thousand variations of this question, run my evaluations on all of them, see which ones are the top one or two performers, take those, feed it back in and iterate and see how many times do I have to go through this iteration until I converge on a prompt that might get me some higher accuracy. Now, through the experimentations that we've done at Carrick so far, what we've learned is that kind of similar to hyperparameter searches for neural networks where you might get two or three percent uh, addition in the KPI that you care about by having to go through that search, doing an automated prompt engineering approach um, can take your business KPIs for your large language model task up five or six percent. So there's actually more bang for your buck in going down this route than there has been historically for a hyperparameter search, uh, which everyone is doing anyways. If you don't want to go down this route, you still have the best trick in your back pocket, which is you can go download an open source model, take the model and fine tune it to be specific to your task. No longer will you have to sit there and do any of the prompt engineering. You will say, this is what the inputs to the model look like. This is the answer that I want you to give, for, given those inputs, and train the model to focus solely on that task, focus fully, solely on those inputs, and focus solely on those outputs. The trade-off, however, is that now you have a custom trained model, a custom trained model that you have to maintain in production for as long as you're going to have that feature available. Um, and you're going to have a larger or required to have a larger data set to do all of that training. So there's trade-offs. Do you want to have uh, many LLM calls uh, in the first route? Do you want to keep it a very human centric activity and let's call it a uh, artisan prompts uh, and have a human write them uh, by themselves? Or do you want to transition more back to a traditional machine learning route where now we are just making custom models for that specific task? Now, if you look at uh, the rapid evolution of generative AI and the increasing complexity of prompt engineering, what kind of predictions do you have for the future of prompt engineering? So what we have noticed is when transitioning from the Palm 2 model suite to the Gemini 1.5 Flash, Gemini 1.5 Pro models, is the amount of prompt engineering that is required goes down substantially. And what I hope to see, very personally, because I have to do the prompt engineering myself, is that the amount that we have to do goes down as models get better and better. Equally, I think that you will always have a set of problems and scenarios where bringing in a fine-tuned large language model is going to make sense. Sometimes it can be cheaper, uh, just self-hosting your large language model, custom trained to your task. And one of the very exciting things that happened over the summer was that Meta came out, they released Llama 3.1, which is the first time a frontier large language model has ever been released to the public, model weights and all, um, upon mo the model being finished trained. And so you can have cutting edge uh, capabilities in your large language models and now fine tune it for literally any task that you want. Um, but my um, sincerest hope is just that as model capabilities grow, the amount of prompt engineering we have to do goes down and that we, not as just myself and not just at Carrick, but as an AI community, get better at figuring out ways of doing these prompt engineering and evaluation methods better. Can we find a way of incorporating a kind of back propagation style prompt engineering approach so that it doesn't take some ML scientists two or three weeks to find the optimal prompt for 50 questions. Aaron, once again, thank you so much for uh, taking time out today to talk to me and share great insights about prompt engineering. Thanks for, for all of that. And I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Anytime.